Hi everyone and welcome to Peak Survival. Today I'm with Tom Penley who's with the fire department and has years of experience with the search and rescue. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, prevention. Before you go out backpacking, bushwhacking, it's really important to know what you're doing and Tom's going to take us through uh, key points and also some case scenarios. Um, so Tom, if you want to introduce yourself a little bit, sure. your background and all that. All right, yeah, I'm Tom Penley. Um, I'm, I currently work for the Peoria Fire Department. I've been with them for 22 years. I'm the manager of the Special Operations Program. Um, earlier in my career, I spent about 15 years with the local mountain rescue team where we did a lot of backcountry search and rescue. Um, I've been involved in a lot of search and rescues over the years. Um, talking about what you're talking about is how do things go wrong for people? And, and I think probably the most common thing that happens is, is in general kind of a lack of preparation. For example, you have an idea that you want to go for a short hike um, and then you see an objective and you say, wow, let's go to that peak. Uh, it, the distance is just a lot greater than you think it is and the next thing you know, um, night's coming, you turn around, you're not sure exactly how long it's going to take to get back and maybe you get compelled to take a shortcut and get off the main trail and say, we can see roughly where the parking lot is, let's cut cross country here and we'll make it back to our car in time. A lot of the search and rescues that we've been on are when people try to take shortcuts and bushwhacking when, you know, the old story, the shortcut is often the long cut and that is classically the case. And people will start bushwhacking, it really slows them down. Then you get disoriented, you're not sure exactly where, and then the drainage kind of takes you um, to places where you don't really want to go. Right. The other thing is when you're out there, you may even have a map and you're looking at a topographic map or even a flat map that um, makes it look really simple to go from point A to point B. Even with a nice uh, USGS topographic map, mm -hmm. small terrain features that you can't cross without the proper equipment won't even show up if the contour interval is 50 feet and you have a 30 foot gorge with steep sides, you won't even see that on the map. Yeah. So that's an important point and even landmarks, it takes a lot of experience to really get good at land nav. So all of those things are kind of important. So I would say um, the big thing is when you're going out for a hike, A, number one, tell somebody where you're going. Absolutely. B, uh, make sure that you have what you need to spend the night. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I would always tell somebody, if I'm going out on the trail, um, hiking, if I don't have what, if, I, if I'm not comfortable to spend the night with what I have with me, I shouldn't be going. Yeah. Okay, okay. You, should, you should just ask yourself that, even if I don't intend to spend the night. Mm -hmm. So we always have talked about the 10 essentials, yeah. um, and, and you can kind of list that out. You know, me, personally, I, I want to have uh, a knife, some kind of fire starter, a compass, um, and uh, water, especially in the desert southwest. That should be the heaviest thing in your pack. You should have way more water than you think you're going to need. Um, and then other stuff, you know, depending on the conditions that you're going into, um, will will weigh in there. A map, for example, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, but being prepared, and, and um, I think a lot of people get into trouble because they underestimate what they're capable of doing in that particular terrain, mm -hmm. and then they start to run out of time, and, and like I said, they start making shortcuts. Um, so you have to be realistic about what you're gonna accomplish. Um, and sometimes the trip out might be better to turn into a recon trip, and then say, maybe we'll come back next weekend and make that objective, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. I can actually add on to what you're saying as well. I've seen, um, well, I've heard of situations where um, people were relatively prepared, but um, they got split up from their group somehow, and so the leader knew the terrain or knew how to orientate himself, but the person that got lost was so dependent on that other person that when they found themselves either you know lost or maybe the guy got injured they felt very vulnerable so I think it's very important for uh, each member to, to be you know well versed in at least the route um, to all be carrying enough water and all be prepared to potentially be on your own if the situation were to arise uh, absolutely S separating your group separating the group is is, is always 
uh, a recipe for disaster. So you might be able to get away with it uh, sometimes, but a lot of the rescues that we've been on have been just for that thing. You know, hey, I'm going slow, you go on ahead. That, that's, that, you're much better off to stick together and you know, spend the night. We call it to be benighted. Benighted. Uh, <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> so you're much better off to stay together as a group and spend the night together collectively or strong than to separate and try and like all go for the car or that, that type of thing. There's a lot of little truisms in search and rescue like yeah. that, that the old story is, you know, as far as separating. Um, if you get lost in your car, if your car breaks down in the middle of nowhere and you decide to walk for help, leave a note so we can know where to look for your body because it's really easy to find a car and it's really hard to find a person. Right. So that's something very important to remember whether, um, you know, whatever destination you're planning on going to, leave, uh, you know, an itinerary of when you're, you know, planning on leaving, coming back, where you're going. So if any situation were to arise, people know where to start looking. Um, so this is part one. Uh, we're going to do a part two now, uh, case scenarios that uh, Tom has experienced, and uh, we'll be back with that.